Hello there. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of the Lambert W function. So remember, if we have an expression such as a e to the a, where a is some real number, then we can apply the Lambert W function to this expression, so w of a e a, is always equal to a for any a in the set of real numbers. And we sort of proved or established this identity in the last video. So in this video we're going to look at some more equations but we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the details associated to the branches of the Lambert W function and how they result to the equations for which we're trying to solve. Alright, so let's just begin by just reviewing a couple basics associated with the Lambert W relation and then talk about the Lambert W function in a little bit more detail. So, if we have this expression, say x e x equal to y, or y e y is equal to x, then we're going to have a relation, namely the Lambert W relation, which sort of has this um, shape, right? So this is going to be x, this is going to be y, and this is going to be the relation that satisfies um, y e y is equal to x. So, uh, a few characteristics that we prove have proven already, namely this point, which is sort of the um, minimum of the inverse relation, uh, corresponds to the point minus 1 over e comma minus 1. So that's that point. So notice that this cur this relation is a multifunction. If I were to choose a number between negative 1 over e and uh, 0, right? So if I were to choose a point, say the average or negative 1 over 2e, then that would give me a point here and I'm going to have two values that sort of correspond to it. So it's a multifunction on certain intervals of its domain. Right? So what we do is we take a, a branch cut uh, or a branch point at this value uh, and then we choose two different branches, one above and one below. So the principal branch is going to be this value here, right? So this is going to be our principal branch, which we're going to notate as w0. And then we have our secondary branch, uh, which is going to be this one down here, which we're just going to denote as w negative 1, or the secondary branch, right? So when we write stuff such as, okay, uh, what is w of 5, or what is w of uh, negative 1 over 2e, like there actually needs to be a little bit more context as to what you're talking about. Because this expression corresponds to the relation w. Well, are we on the principal branch or are we on the secondary branch? Because w5 clearly is a single valued expression, but w of negative 1 over 2e is a multi-value or two-value expression, which we can clearly see from the relation graph here. So we sort of need to figure out, okay, well, w of negative 1 over 2e has two values. It has a w1 value and w, I mean, w0 value and w negative 1 value. So we sort of need to investigate that uh, in a little bit of detail. So the primary equation that we're going to be focusing on uh, this time is the equation y is equal to uh, x e to the x, and our goal is to solve for x. So what are all our possible equations here? So I'm just going to draw the graph uh, of this particular type of equation, uh, which is not too hard to generate. So we have this type of thing. So again, this point corresponds to negative 1 comma negative 1 over e, uh, where negative 1 over e is the y value that's going to be of interest. Alright, so case 1 uh, that we're going to look at, so case 1. Let us assume we have x e to the x is equal to a, where a is a number less than negative 1 over e. So if this is the case, then clearly there is no solution in the set of real numbers that satisfies, because uh, in this particular case, so here's our relation, so if our y value a is less than negative 1 over e, then we're going to have some value here. Which, of course, this blue and black curve do not intersect, therefore there is no solution, at least in the set of real numbers. right? So, as an example, 
If I say, okay, solve the equation x e to the x is equal to minus 50, then you should be able to say that since negative 50 is less than negative 1 over e, therefore there is no real solution to this equation. Of course, you can start to uh, investigate the complex solutions, but um, that is beyond the focus of what we're doing here. All right, so let's look at the second case. So we're just going to move this line up uh, vertically and look at all the possible cases here. So the second case is x e to the x is equal to a, and let us assume that a is equal to uh, minus uh, 1 over e. All right, so when a is equal to minus 1 over e, so where are we now? So we have this uh, not quite has to pass through the origin. All right, so that's a little uh, exaggerated, but maybe at the point. So this is my negative 1 over e curve. So clearly there is one solution. So therefore, if I want to solve uh, x e to the x is equal to negative 1 over e, I have exactly one solution, right? Namely, x is equal to uh, minus 1, right? Now, in particular, well, how do I show that algebraically? So if I have this type of relation, so I can take the Lambert w of both sides. So I have just w x e x is equal to w of minus 1 over e. So by properties of w, w x e x is always equal to x for any x in r. So we have x is equal to w of minus 1 over e. Now what branch are we looking at? So we know that negative 1 over e belongs to both of the branches, both the pr principal and the secondary branch of the Lambert w relation. So therefore we have actual uh, two values, right? Namely, we have w0 of minus 1 over e and w minus 1 of minus 1 over e. But we know uh, that minus 1 over e is the branch point uh, of this relation. So since they are equal to the same value at the branch point, then both of them are going to be equal to negative 1. Right? So that would be sort of the algebraic justification of sort of what we're looking at here. So it's a little bit more in depth than some people may be comfortable with when solving equations. Um, but since we're dealing with multifunction inverse images, uh, we're definitely going to have this a uh, tad bit more complexity added to this, right? Because sometimes we can have zero, one, or two solutions. So we sort of need to investigate each of them in the cases when they exist. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, next case. So case three. So again, we're going to be looking at x e x is equal to, let's look at x equals x equals a for a greater than or equal to zero. So where are we at? So let's draw our relation here. So now we're going to be picking a point above or a horizontal line that is going to be above the x-axis, right? So clearly we're going to have exactly one solution, right? And keep in mind that this curve definitely passes through the origin, right? So if it passes through the origin, then the solution is zero, no big deal there. So we're going to have, uh, so w x e x is going to be equal to w of a, and we're going to assume that a is greater than or equal to zero in this uh, justification. So x is going to be equal to w of a. All right, so remember that our our principal branch starts off at that point, right? So every point uh, past this is going to be lying on the principal branch of that value. So since a is greater than or equal to zero, which is of course greater than negative one over e, then the values of this solution are always going to be lying on the principal branch of the inverse image, right? So this is going to be equal to w of 0 of a, right? So uh, let's just look at an example uh, for that. So if I have uh, x e x is equal to 5, and I say, okay, solve this equation for x. So you take the w of both sides, so you have w x e x is equal to w of 5, and since w x e x is equal to x for all x and r, we're going to have x is equal to w of 5. So what type of value does w of 5 have? Well, since 5 is greater than 0, then we're going to have one solution, and that one solution is going to be lying on the principal branch of the Lambert w relation. So that means x is going to be equal to w 0 of 5. Right? And then you can use some numerical methods to approximate that if you wish, but that would be the exact solution. And the last case, so case number four, let's consider the case x e x is equal to a, and let's choose number a between negative one over e and zero, not inclusive of each of the boundaries. 
right? So if we have this relation, and I'm going to exaggerate this graph to sort of get an idea, right? So now I'm going to be picking a point between these two dotted green lines. So for example, that. So in this case, we're going to have two solutions. And since the branch point of the inverse relation is located there, we're going to have one on the principal and one on the secondary branch. All right. So as an example, suppose I have the equation xex is equal to minus one fourth. So it's clearly easy to see that one fourth uh, lies within the interval uh, negative one over e comma zero. Like you should be able to at least verify that, right? So if that is the case. In either case, right, we can still apply w to both sides. So we have w of x e x is equal to w of minus one fourth, right? So if that's the case, then x is going to be equal to w of minus one fourth. So what is w of minus one fourth? So where is minus one fourth? Well, minus one fourth is between negative one over e and zero, right? So in that case, we have two solutions. We have one on the principal, one on the secondary branch, right? So the first solution, x one, is going to be equal to w of zero of negative one fourth. And we have the secondary solution, x2, is going to be equal to the secondary branch evaluated at negative one-fourth, right? So in terms of what we're looking for, this number here is going to be x2, since that's on the secondary branch, and this value x here is going to be the principal branch value x1. So then you can use whatever approximation details in case you want like a decimal value. So you can say, okay, um, x1 is going to be equal to w0 of negative one-fourth, uh, which is approximately equal to negative 0.36, and x2 is going to be equal to w minus 1 of minus 1 fourth, which is approximately equal to uh, negative 2.15, right? So those are our two analytical solutions and approximate solutions, which you can uh, get via, say, the Newton method or the newton raston method, if you're familiar with that. And that covers all of the possible cases for the equation x e x is equal to a, which of course is a very special case, but you can of course extend this um, via a lot of things, which we're going to do in the next video, of course. All right. So let's just go through a series of examples to sort of see, okay, how many solutions, where are they, and uh, how to find them. All right. So example one. So x e x is equal to minus five. So how many solutions are there for this equation? So since negative 5 is less than negative 1 over e, then we know that this equation has no real solutions, right? Example 2, x e x is equal to 0. So how many solutions does this have? So we know 0 is greater than or equal to 0, right? But it's very easy to verify that 1 is a solution, right? So we can apply uh, both sides of this. So w x e x is equal to w of 0. So we have that x is going to be equal to w of 0. Right? We know that w, the origin, lies on the principal branch of the Lambert w uh, relation, right? Because remember Lambert w is this curve, right? And the, and the branch point located there, we're here. So we're on the principal branch, right? Which is the origin. So we have that x is going to be equal to w of 0 of 0, which we can easily verify to be 1. All right, so let's look at our next example. So example three, suppose we have x e x is equal to minus one over e. So we can apply the Lambert w function to both sides of this. So we have w x e x is equal to w of minus one over e, right? So we have, of course, x is going to be equal to w of minus one over e. So where are we now? So in terms of the Lambert w relation, right, which has this type of shape, uh, minus 1 over e is going to be located right here, right, which has the value of minus 1, right, since this is minus 1 over e comma minus 1. Now, it doesn't really matter how you sort of uh, denote this solution because we know the principal branch is up top and the secondary branch uh, is down bottom. And at this point, negative 1 over e uh, comma negative 1 is the branch point for these two branches, which is where they meet, right? So it doesn't really matter how you denote this solution. So you can either say x is equal to um, w0 of negative 1 over e or w minus 1 of minus 1 over e uh, because it's a branch point, so therefore they're equal to the same value of negative 1. All right, so example 4. Suppose we have uh, x e to the x is equal to 5. So of course x is going to be equal to w5, and 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1 over e. 
So that means we're uh, choosing a point somewhere over here. Right? So we're going to have one unique solution on the principal branch of the relation. Uh, so you can find that this is going to be equal to w0 of 5, uh, which we can approximate to 1.33 if we have the capability to. And um, a last example, example 5. Suppose we have x e x is equal to minus 1 7th. So what do we know about minus 1 7th? Well, minus 1 7th lies between negative 1 over e and is definitely a negative number, right? So if this is the case, then that means we have a point that lies on the relation. So let's draw our Lambert relation, right? So we have this. So minus 1 over 7th is going to be located somewhere here. So since our Lambert W relation is a multifunction, it's going to have two solutions, one line on the, the principal branch and one on the secondary branch. Right. So algebraically, how do we show that? So W X E X is going to be equal to W minus 1 over 7. So by properties of W, we have that X is going to be equal to W of minus 1 over 7. This is not the solution, right? So properties of W and the domain, uh, W is a multifunction between the values of minus 1 E, minus 1 over E and 0. So we have two solutions. So we have that X1 is going to be equal to the principal branch of minus 1 7th and x2 is going to be equal to the secondary branch at minus 1 7th. So these are the two solutions. And then you can approximate these. So this is going to be approximately equal to uh, minus 0.17, and this is going to be approximately equal to minus 3.07. So what are these numbers? Well, these numbers are the y values that sort of uh, correspond to that, right? So this is going to be equal to y1, and this is going to be equal to... Um, y2 or x1 and x2 right right since we're choosing a particular x value in the domain of w that's going to output a particular range value which is the solution of the inverse relation for which we're trying to solve right so these are the two solutions uh, for this particular equation x dx is equal to negative 1 over 7. so that's just a more in-depth discussion of how to solve these particular types of exponential linear equations using the Lambert W functions and also considering the branches and branch points of this function that we're sort of using this to algebraically solve. In the next video we're going to dive in a little bit more detail of another type of um, function that is extremely common, uh, in particular x to the x, uh, and we're going to discuss uh, again how to solve those equations with uh, branches, branch points, and how to determine whether there's one, none, two, or possibly even more solutions to that. Hope you enjoyed.